community. It's community. Right, yeah, very. Good morning, East Orrington Congregational Church. How is everybody doing this fine fall morning? Thank you for that. Cold? You should have been here 7.30, 8 o'clock, huh? We managed to get the heat turned up for you, and I think there's going to be plenty of hot air in here shortly, so we should be good. Should be good. Did that, did that come out out loud? I'm, forgive me. We want to welcome uh, all of you. Uh, for those of you that have joined us uh, today, perhaps for the first time, we are thrilled to have you with us. Uh, we've often said whether you're with us for 60 minutes or 60 years, uh, you are important to God, and therefore you are important to us. And so we appreciate you joining us this morning. We want to remind you that uh, we do have a coffee fellowship opportunity downstairs uh, following uh, the worship service, and we invite you to join us down there. It's a great opportunity to get acquainted or reacquainted, perhaps, with uh, friends and family. Uh, we'd like to remind you about the white pew cards that are in front of you. It is a great way to communicate uh, with some of the church leadership. If you are in need of uh, being contacted or prayer lifted up, uh, th those pew cards are a, a wonderful opportunity to identify that and put them in the offering plate uh, at the appropriate uh, time. Um, a couple of bulletin changes I need to make you aware of. Uh, one, the reading today uh, from your pew Bibles will be page 799. We're not changing that, but I will be reading from the NIV version, um, just to let you know, as you're following along, there may be some slight word uh, differences, and the reason is I'll be reading from the NIV. Um, we will not be doing our hymn number 213, Let Us Break Bread Together. The uh, choral anthem will actually be sung at that point in the service. It fits very nicely uh, with communion, and it's absolutely beautiful. So. Uh, we're excited about that. Uh, we want to, I want to bring your attention to uh, a, the bulletin reminder uh, that you'll see from the EOCC crafters uh, looking for goods, if you will, for our old country store fair coming in November. It's a great opportunity for folks who may have wares uh, that they would like to offer um, to the crafters as part of that uh, let's get into Christmas event. So uh, who with the EOCC crafters, who would we, if somebody had something, who would we need to speak to directly? Loretta, but I don't see her. I didn't see her, yeah. Okay. Or you can talk to the office, myself. That works. So Loretta, uh, Norwood would be one, or give the office a call if you have something that you would perhaps like to offer uh, that, that event in November. Um, at this time, Doug Fogg has some information he'd like to share with you uh, from our missions board. Thanks, sir. October is missions month in our church where we have a chance to highlight um, all the mission work that this church does. And for a small church in a small town, we do a lot. And we could not do it without all of you. I would like people who are on the missions board to stand up, if you would, just so you can see who they are. Okay, and we're missing a few today, but if you ever have questions about missions, these are the people you want to talk to. We take very seriously uh, the scripture where Jesus tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves, and also the Great Commission, therefore go and make disciples of all the nations. Um, we need to look out for our neighbors around Orrington and the communities here. We need to spread out to the nations as well, and our, your missions board um, does that, and all the people who work with that. Just because um, I had those missions board people stand up doesn't mean that everybody here is not doing missions in some way. The way you all reach out to your neighbors, um, support the missions that we put before you, um, um, just in your daily life, reaching out to those around you, that's all part of the mission of this church, and we greatly appreciate all of that. Um, some of the missions that we do support officially as, as church, the Pastor's Discretionary Fund, Orrington Food Cupboard, the Christmas and Thanksgiving Baskets, Summer Barbecues for the Homeless, Operation Christmas Child, Blanket Donations to the Bangor Humane Society, Compassion International, uh, Bangor Area Street Pastors, Medical Missions to the Dominican Republic, um, Sister Parish, 
international. Um, and that's what I'm here to highlight today. Um, that's, that's my passion. We'll have somebody up here every week highlighting one mission or another. Um, Sister Parish is something that Danielle and I got involved with back in 2007 in our church in North Carolina, and it's something that, that we were very excited to bring to this church. Uh, we um, officially uh, had a linkage with a village in northern Guatemala, the, the village of Virginia, not to be confused with the state of Virginia, but Virginia, Guatemala, we have been, had a link as a sister parish for the past year. We're very excited that next year we're planning a delegation to send down. Uh, we have five people right now planning on going down next July. We have been in contact with the people of Virginia. They're very excited about having us come down, and it's a mission of solidarity. Um, one thing we have found is that spending time in a developing nation changes our whole perspective of the world. When we live in the richest nation in the world, it's sort of hard to see um, and understand what it's like to live in a nation that's struggling. Um, not just some people, but the whole nation struggling. Um, and so it changes our whole perspective on everything. The way we live, our charitable giving, um, international issues like immigration and politics and and you know world finances um, your whole perspective changes when you get to know these people and how they live and uh, so, so any of you who have had experiences in developing nations I'm sure you would agree with me but it also does great things for them too it gives the, them the confidence to step out and advocate for themselves in a country um, where that has been prohibited or um, or certainly discouraged. And so we have seen um, many different villages stepping forward because they know they have friends in the United States, step forward and start advocating themselves for education, for power, um, for medical services. And things change dramatically, not because of something we go down and do and build, but something they are able to do because they have the confidence, because they have friends in the United States. And that's so, we're very excited about that. We still have room for three or four more delegates to Guatemala next July, and we're starting the fundraising very shortly. So if you are at all interested, the application is right here, and I would love to have three or four more people on board. We need at least six people uh, to, to make a delegation to, to make it all happen. And we've got five right now, and it's always good to have a few extras. We can have up to 10. So if you're interested at all, love to have you with us. Um, it is not on the website. We'll make sure it is. Thank you. Um, but as soon as possible. I, I had an original deadline of September 1st, but one way or the other, we're going to get the delegates we need, and, and we're going to go down. It's going to be a wonderful experience. Uh, Betty Spearing of, of Compassion uh, International is going to speak to you in two weeks, but she did have a couple of quick announcements you want to make. The Angler's offer of a shoebox for onion rings is no longer in effect. And Compassion has extended the date on My Child Packets. Um, she, uh, she does have packets. They will be downstairs. Like I said, we'll be highlighting that mission in two weeks. But if you have any questions in the meantime, talk to her downstairs. And one last thing. We are trying a new fundraiser this, this year. And I hope, hope this goes well. And I hope you're going to enjoy it. We're selling Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, we have an order form here for the next three weeks, this week, next week, and the week following. So up through the 20th of October, we will be taking orders for donuts, the original glaze, chocolate ice, raspberry filled, lemon filled, cream filled. Um, it's $10 for a dozen of the original glaze. The specialty ones are $12 a dozen. But the great thing, we'll take your orders up until the 20th, on the, 20, on the morning of the 27th, Sunday morning, I'm going to make a run down to the Krispy Kreme down in Lewiston or Auburn or somewhere down there. But anyway, make a run down, and we'll get them here fresh um, for church on the 27th. So see any of the missions people. We will all have forms. Um, if you are interested in taking the form out to the community and getting orders from others, see us. Danielle and I have the forms this morning. We will make sure that you can sell as many boxes as you can, and I have a very large, large cart that can fit lots and lots of boxes of Krispy Kreme. <laughs> so we would love to have you, and thank you again for your support of all the missions um, that we do do in this church. Thanks. Thank you, Doug. So, Doug, you say the donut thing takes place on the 27th. On the 28th, do we pick up Weight Watchers as a mission we support? Is, is that something? Just out of curiosity. 
Um, so I encourage you to take a look in your bulletins. The bulletin contains a lot of information, a lot of folks that we are holding up in prayer. Uh, it is, uh, our, again, a, an opportunity to understand some of the goings on uh, here in this church family. And on the website, eocme.com. Um, I got up to 32 degrees today. The temperatures have been in decline, and that has triggered the great migration. Uh, you, everybody's moving to Florida. And as a result, we have a number of snowbirds who uh, are not with us physically today, but will be with us uh, in spirit and as a family when they join us in watching this service on our website a little bit later today. That is usually up and, and what's that? And Facebook, thank you very much. That is usually up about one o'clock. So as we stand here in just a moment to share the right hand of Christian fellowship uh, with one another, let's make sure we take a look at this camera up here and say hello to our friends and our family who may not be with us physically, but are certainly with us in spirit. Let us join together in the right hand of Christian fellowship. Hello to all. That's it is what it is. I know. I right? know. But I always get a couple of questions. Candles lighted, silence and reflection. And now, as we prepare ourselves for worship, let us join together in prayer or personal meditation as we invite the light of Christ into our sanctuary. I want to begin by reading from Psalm 37. It says, Do not fret of evil men, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord Trust in him, 
and he will make you righteous like the, sh- the dawn of the morning. The justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. Do not fret. This passage written by King David attributed to him is a call to action if you hear this carefully. It is a call of action to not pay attention to the world, the evilness and the craziness that's going on. It's so easy to get caught up in that. But instead he is calling us to action to trust in the Lord and do good. No matter what's going on around you, you are being called to trust. That's hard at times. But I do believe with the presence of the Holy Spirit, God, everything is possible. So do not fret, for evil men will be cut off. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. That's our promise, folks. So we come to celebrate that promise. We come to give our life to Christ and to celebrate what he has blessed us with. And so I encourage you to, during this service and listening to the anthem, as we come together as a family, we celebrate what Christ has done for us in our life. As we turn to him right now, And we lift our lives up in prayer to the Mighty One. Let us pray. Gracious, almighty God, we thank you for the day we are blessed to have. For every breath we take. For the morning sun. And also, Lord, at times, we give you thanks for even the darkness. The trials and the tribulations. For we know, O Lord, you are with us in all situations. That sometimes it's so easy to look at the evilness. And dwell in that. But may we hear and heed the command of your servant David. Where he calls us to trust and trust in you alone. For you will lift us out of the darkness. You will lift us out of the valleys. And you will eventually place us up on the mountaintop. Where we will taste the goodness. Father we pray for those who seem lost. We pray for each other in this congregation, for those that we see every week and those that we see occasionally. It does not matter, for we are one in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for those that serve in our military who are pulled away from their homes and sometimes put in harm's way in a foreign land. Father, we pray that their hearts are always open to your word, the word that brings peace The understanding that we should not fret of what's happening right around us, but we need to trust in you. May that be part of the soldiers' lives. Father, we pray this for our fire departments and our police departments. We pray this for any civil service person who's going out and putting their life on the line, walking into unknown situations. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the opportunity you have blessed us with in serving, in being called into action, to put our faith in action. We thank you, O Lord, to remind us over and over again that in order to move forward, we must repent. We must forgive. We must see that you are the way to tomorrow. O Father, bless this church family, bless the leadership and all the volunteers. I ask for blessings on every board that serves this church. But I also extend that out to all churches, O Lord. May we all be faithful to the calling you have asked us to be. May we all be faithful in recognizing that your son, Jesus Christ, is the head of all churches. That it's not about a choir or a pastor. It's not about the trustees or the deacons or the missions or the education. It is about your son, Jesus Christ. May we serve him to the fullness that we can. May we always look for opportunities to grow, to help, 
and to serve. Father, we turn to you in all situations. We give you thanks for the witnessing of a gentleman who, who forgave another who murdered his brother. We thank you for the witnessing of grace brought live to us. Almighty God, may we live our faith in the same way. As we turn to your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father. First hymn, I have a song that Jesus gave me, found on page 404 in your hymnal, but the words are also on the screen. So, in my study, in my deliberations, I believe the Holy Spirit works with me in an interesting way. As I read and as I look to understand, um, questions pop into my head, questions asked specifically of me. And I've sh shared those on occasion with the men's group and others, but in preparation for today, a question that is on my mind, in my heart, and that I will share with you is this, are you here today in hopes of eliciting a response from God? Or is your presence, my presence here today, a response in gratitude for what God has already done for us? I believe the offertory 
is an opportunity for us to be very deliberate in our opportunity to respond in gratitude to a God that has shown us already amazing grace and salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. With that in mind, I invite the deacons forward to accept today's offer. Holy and merciful God, Lord, we ask for your blessings to be upon these gifts and everything that we do, O oh Lord. May we do it to serve you, serve the kingdom here on earth. Father, we ask for the blessings to uh, be used and be multiplied in ways that we may not even see, but it is felt by your people. Father, we give you thanks and out of gratitude we give. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. As we prepare ourselves now to hear the word of God, I invite you to join me in the unison prayer, the words of which are printed in the bulletin or on the screens. Lord, upon the pages of this book is your story. It is also our story. Open our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear, our minds that we may understand and our hearts that they may be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reading today is from the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10, and can be found on page 799 in your pew Bibles, and I encourage you to follow along. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. May God bless to our understanding this reading from his holy word.
welcome to our Sunday school kiddos and teachers. It's nice to have you up here with us. You know, this passage Dan just read, most of us have heard the, the, the parable of the mustard seed. But let, I need to make sure, you know, because in Matthew's gospel, there's also the story of the parable of the mustard seed. And they're two different viewpoints. They have different understandings of what Jesus is trying to bring to us. In fact, I believe there are two different questions. In the, the story in Matthew's gospel, Matthew, well, the disciples just got back to Jesus and he said, they say, we can't cast out this demon. And Jesus had just before that cast out the very demon that they could not cast out. And they asked Jesus, why can't we cast out the demons? And if you remember in Matthew's gospel, it's almost like a scolding to the disciples. Well, it's because you did not have enough faith. It was you of little faith. In Luke's gospel, Jesus is answering a different question. Because right before the disciples asked for more faith, what, we have, what Jesus is saying to them is forgive. He is telling them that, that, well, he's teaching about forgiveness, and he's saying that the most critical thing that we need to do at all times is to forgive one another. We need to forgive, even to the point in the story right before this that Dan didn't read, but is right before it. He is talking about, well, what happens if a person in the same day does something bad, evil against you seven times? And Jesus says, well, if they come back and repent, you forgive them every single time. There's no exceptions. That's hard to do. It's hard to do. Because I think in my attitude and many of our attitudes is, I'm not going to keep doing this. But Jesus clearly says forgiveness is what we need to do on a regular basis. So with this, I see the disciples are realizing or possibly realizing that forgiveness, what Jesus was asking them to do, they needed more help. It was beyond their almost beyond their capacity to forgive the way Jesus was asking them to forgive. And so he was asking them more than what they could give. Jesus was requiring something that they felt loose on. And in, in a way, what they are saying to me, and hopefully to all of you in the parable, is an understanding of faith. Faith is nothing you is not anything that you can manufacture on your own. It is a gift from God. Throughout Scripture, faith is a gift from God. And too often we think we manufacture the faith. We build the faith. I mean, I think we've all heard that before. But it's God who gives us the faith. And I think in them asking, they're they're rec recognizing this, that it's God, Lord, give me more faith. And what we know is. You know, I know Dan just talked about his reading and his journey. As it gets more into it, the questions pop. The truth is, is there is no 30-day plan that gives you more faith. You know, Lord, give me more faith. Well, here's the 30-day plan. Follow this, and at the end of it, you'll have more faith. That's not how it works. See, they are understanding that it's only a gift from God. So who do we need to go to? God. See, Increase our faith, they said. And Jesus, as he normally does, and we hear it, and it drives me bonkers at times, he doesn't give them the 30-day plan. He gives them a parable. It'd be so much easier when, when we need more faith. We can just look it up, Luke 17, chapter, verses 5 through 9. And if we read that, there the faith would be poof. I don't know about any of you, it's never worked for me. But this parable teaches us something, and that's what we need to look at. See, I have certainly in my lifetime have talked with God about my need of more faith. I don't think I'm probably alone. I'm sure many of you have come into situations. So I can relate to the, the disciples' questions about more faith. And as Jesus does so often in this parable for me, as Dan asks questions, I see questions, and I ask myself questions too. Is it... Jesus has a way of turning it around, a parable. And instead of me asking and, and hoping or, or praying for a bigger faith or more faith so I can get something accomplished, 
I think Jesus is turning around and saying, the faith that I have, look for the opportunities to use it. See, oftentimes we think we can't do something because we don't have enough. And the truth is, Jesus isn't going to leave us out there without tools to do what he's asking us to do. We just need to put it into action. The Patriots, and I don't know how many Patriot fans we have here, but maybe, maybe a few. But even if you're not a Patriot fan, you know how great they are, how incredibly great they are. Probably the best team in history of football, don't you think? I, I don't think so. No, I, I don't have any doubt that they are. But they have a motto that's awesome. Do your job. Do your job. And what we see in this motto is a group of different people from different backgrounds, different colors, different races. Now we even got a German over playing for us, you know, different nationalities. And they all have one purpose, to do their job. Not to worry about his job. Not to let the outside world dictate what they do, but to do their job. Wow. Dan led me to watch something on TV about a Christian man who was called to do his job. Many of you might have seen this on YouTube or on the news or wherever it might have been where if you remember the story, a, a white police officer went into 